All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some more Orzov Angels. And I'm making a f keeping the same main deck that we've been playing here recently, but making a few important changes to the sideboard that I think that will help out. Taking out the Sorceress, well, actually before that, for I'm taking out the Argyle's Bloodfast, um, which I think the, the Bloodfast hasn't really helped us very much, and it's kind of just like for Esper, but then Esper has like the Mortify also. And it, and it costs like the extra mana, the life. I don't know. It's it's kind of clunky. And you know what? I'm just getting rid of it and playing a third Midnight Reaper. I think that'll just be better for us. You know, I, I think even against just like Esper Control, I'd rather just have Midnight Reaper than the Bloodfast, where we can um, play our creature that can help draw us cards and everything. I think so. I think that's a good upgrade. And then Spyglass, Sorcerer Spyglass, also hasn't really been doing very much. So taking that out and taking out one of the two Vrasis Contempts, because we have a, a good amount of removal spells in here, and playing two Basilica Bell Haunts. We have been surprisingly struggling with some aggro decks, like Mono Red, Mono White. Um, and by struggling is strong. Losing a couple matches there, and I think just having a couple Bell Haunts in the sideboard could help out with those matchups. The big problem with playing Bell Haunt though is it, it does not work with Honor Guard. And so like that's that's not great. Um, usually Honor Guard dies. Like especially thinking about Mono Red, usually Honor Guard will die. Um, the other option here is playing like two copies of Shalai is an option here for those matchups as well. Um, with Shalai to help protect Lyra and stuff. <clears throat> we're not really usually losing whenever we're drawing Lyra. The problem is we're just not really drawing Lyra. We need some other things. And Shalai on her own, without any ability to activate or anything. I don't know. I kind of want the Bell Haunts. So, oh, let's go that way. Bell Haunts not even bad against, like, control and everything. Just making them discard and, you know, being a two-for-one kind of thing. It could actually come in there also. Yeah, Bell Haunts kind of cool. So let's let's go ahead and try that. Besides that, I I like the the rest of our deck and everything, and um, yeah, let's let's keep it going. Techstar, thank you so much for that resub. Kicking the stream off with some hype this afternoon. This is not quite morning. All right, Orzov Angels. Hey, Magic Harry. Techstar says, Hey, Todd. Thanks. Or, sorry, hey Todd, always enjoy the stream. Keep up the great work. There we go. Now I wanted to say thank you, Texo. Okay, let's see what we got here. Looks like we got to keep. Definitely want to hit our land drops. Vanguard is a. Powerful card to stick around, and then we started Johnny ticking it up. Yeah, Ugin looks pretty cool. I saw Ugin there on Mythic Spoiler. Ooh, do I need to cast down that thing? No. Let's let's get our our Vanguard in play here. Question is, does Ethereal Absolution do, do something in this deck? I think the answer is kind of not really. It is. It's just really expensive at six mana. And there is pretty decent enchantment removal in the format and everything. So if I go with the cast down here, it's it's pretty likely our opponent just has some kind of removal spell for the or like some kind of counter spell. You know, whether it's dive down or spell pierce. I think that's pretty likely. So I'm actually just going to play the Midnight Reaper out. And even though my opponent can... Um, draw an extra card here. We're, we got a lot more pressure. You know, we're dealing 6 damage a turn. It, it definitely incentivizes my opponent to get some kind of threat uh, that will help trade with these. So I could see something like a Tempest Gen being played here. Uh, no, just a Storm Tamer. Hmm. I 
Hey, Nidorak, good evening. Yeah, I would... This is kind of a time to be hesitant to craft stuff, probably. With the format likely changing after this. Because I think War of the Sparks is going to have a really big impact on the format. No, not, not playing any singleton today. Hmm. I was really hoping they'd play a Tempest Gen and tap down to only one mana. But now they, they still have two mana available to uh, counter a Johnny. They do not have Essence Capture or Wizard of Tori, so... Okay, that worked. I understand you are in need of support. You are capable of more than you assume. So they're gonna... No, no Trickster to kill Vanguard. Hi there. Trickster gets to... Yeah, we have to be careful with Trickster with Vanguard. Yeah. Okay, that's Papa Johnny. Coming in here. So they gotta have... Gotta have Trickster here, right? <sighs> or just another blocker? Like this cat hair on my face. Mm. Deliver us. So to dive the down. Ooh, no dive down. I think the dive down would save the Tempest Gen. A little surprised by that. Mm. Do I want to play a new Ajani? Not really. <laughs> Hawkeye is a Johnny in disguise. True. Well, we haven't won yet. You can't. You cannot get your opponent's creatures with a Johnny. This is all this should distract you. Or yeah, or you're saying unsummon? Yeah, that doesn't A Johnny gets creatures from your puts creatures from your graveyard onto the battlefield. We can't remove their creatures with a Johnny. Be strong. Well, this is only when it's target of a spell, not ability. Looks like we're dead. They got seven here. Now having the another blocker to go with those Terramanders. Man, 
Terramander is so good. It's a 5-5, five, five, one mana. We needed one more removal spell that whole time. We needed one other removal spell. Um, don't really want a Johnny. Usually, a Danto Vanguard doesn't do a whole lot for us in this matchup. Um, Trickster makes a Danto Vanguard pretty bad. Paying the four life is kind of rough. Uh, if if you don't have a Johnny, you can't take it up through to get through Tempest Gen. Yeah, yeah, it was not a good ch not a good chance that we got a removal spell. I guess any of the the angels would have been really nice too. Besides a removal spell, if we would have just drawn a, a flying blocker. But oh well. Just kind of drew a lot of lands, and a history banalia, and an, another another vanguard. Second vanguard in the history. And lands. It's definitely better that we're on the play with this hand than on the draw. Um, on the draw, our opponent could already be like attacking on turn two with their, their one drop. Oh my gosh. Not you. There we go. You. All right, not going to let them untap and have Curious Obsession plus dive down or anything like that. Just going to go ahead and kill that Terramander right now. And yeah, incentivize them to play more things on this turn and tap out. So now we get to resolve Resplendent Angel. And now if they have Curious Obsession, it's not nearly as good. Hey, Baloney Pony, good to see ya. Wow. They had a lot of one-drops. Wow. That was a great draw step. That was a great draw step. So they could block with all four creatures if they want to kill Seraph, but that's probably not very likely. And yeah, we're both going wide. Now, Tithe Taker's in play. We don't have to really even worry about... Don't have to worry about Trickster anymore. There's the angels. Found those angels. <laughs> Confirmed. Angels beat 1-1s. One that would be a pretty sad dual deck. Angels v 1-1s. One
Can we get game three on the draw? I hope our opponent has the same kind of hands. You know, not one drop, curious obsession, dive down. Basically. Hopefully they have a very similar kind of hand. Just have a bunch of 1-1s. One That's all you need. No Curious Obsession, no Counter Magic. Just a bunch of 1-1s. One ones. Ugh, if I was on the play, maybe. I feel like this is a mulligan, though. They're down to six cards. Yeah, we just have to mulligan. I mean, I love Seraph, and I love having my land drops, but... Okay, this is not bad. We are dressing here the first turn of the game. You're great, Lyra, but we don't have two other lands. Uh, that one hurts to put on the bottom because we know we're not drawing that now. Right, let's try to take this Curious Obsession. All right, no obsession. An opt and a retort. We'll take the retort. Could see taking Opt here, honestly, because the main way we lose is they find Obsession. And so Opt helps them find Obsession. Alright, Honor Guards basically does nothing except for stop Trickster. <laughs> Pretty narrow. Pretty narrow. The 1-3 body doesn't really matter. Um, but, usually, so usually that's not good enough. But whenever we have, like, these angels that if we get them to resolve, like, anytime they resolve, we really want to have, uh, really want to stop Trickster. Alright, Tithaker did its job. Protect my more important things. We are playing Orzov Angels right now. First deck of the day. I'm spelling fantastic. It makes me feel good. Stay dead. I played Kaya too fast there. We had those voice lines run over top of each other. So if this gets a dive down, then they won't have the mana to counter Resplendent Angel. Sometimes burying them just isn't good enough. All right, no attacks. No attacks, no respond angel, nothing. So if I, you know, attacking for one doesn't matter that much, but yeah, trickster. I want to be able to block this trickster, be able to keep Kai alive. But then if they also just, if they had like, you know, counter spell, just didn't need to play the respond angel right then. Ugh. It's a little annoying. Okay, hoping their last card is not a counter spell. Pray. I think I'll get rid of these. Good job, Kaya. You did your job. Yeah, even if that was countered or not countered, either way, I would Kaya was getting rid of the curious obsession there. I attack with Resplendent Angel and they Trickster Resplendent Angel. That's annoying. But if I don't, 
If they don't, it's like game winning. So what what phase are we in right now? Are they after blocks? I guess it doesn't really matter. I have nothing else to spend my man on. Hooray! No. No, that's fine. be game. I think we got this. Four, five, six. All right, is there. I mean, even a even a trickster. Like we still have. Yeah, I mean, tap that, but we still just have the two lethal attackers. So, gotta have like an unsummon. All right. Want to know? All right, got the first match of the day. <laughs> hey, what's up, boot? Hope work's going well these days. All right, good hand, as long as we draw lands. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Is the opponent playing my mono black zombies deck? I hope so. These are the sleeves I use for my mono black zombies deck, and that's the land I use. No. Boo. The deck was so cool a little bit ago. Went downhill quickly. So drawing another Swamp means we don't get to cast History next turn, currently. Now, so I'd like, I'd like to find that other White Source. All right, well, looks like we're mortifying that Priest of the Forgotten Gods, either way. Yeah. So if I just play History, they get to activate Priest. Uh, kill my token, sack both of these, add two mana, draw another card. Sounds like just a big headache. Let's not let that happen. Didn't get to do any PC stuff yet. Um, so hopefully we'll do that soon. Actually didn't. Uh, it was easier for you to do it today. But then I had some last second tax stuff come up today that I had to take care of. And I, I did. So I did a good job there. So I... have feel accomplished today. Did some good work. And um, so hopefully we'll do some PC stuff tomorrow. But yeah, I'll let y'all know how it goes.
No. No. I don't have any removal soul for that priest. Hmm. Game's not over. That priest can do a whole lot. Well, I still have the Seraph that I get to exile or that I get to sacrifice. Seraph is a pretty decent card to sacrifice. You know how it ma makes the afterlife tokens and everything. life tokens are good for sacrificing also. Well, hopefully Lyra just gains enough life for us. We don't have to worry about not blocking... Molder Hulk. Field of Ruin. Alright, so do I play another Seraph, which is another Life Linker? Or do I go double history? Probably just go the other Seraph, right? So, like, they're taking five, six, seven, they go down to eight. I think it's actually just Seraph. Attacking with all these things. We need to sack a 1 1. This prevents the gutter bones from attacking. No, Seraph is not legendary. You can tell by the border. See how this see what this Lyra border looks like? That's a legendary creature. The Seraph doesn't have that border, so it's it's not legendary. That's the difference. So the only legendary creature in this deck is this Lyra, because you see that border there. That's the only one. All the Planeswalkers are legendary. They have their own special border already. So what are we playing against? Oh yeah. Gutterbone stuff. Don't think we really need a Johnny's. Do I want to play Bell Haunts in this matchup? Maybe. I feel like like this may be too much removal. Like their deck's usually pretty good against removal. The the main thing we really want to be able to kill is uh, priest. I guess I guess I'll play two of Johnny's over two Mortifies. Maybe one Midnight Reaper, one a Johnny. Try that. Nope. Uh, not very many Mythic Rares are legendary. Some are. But not all of them. 
Well, Kaya is awesome. With sideboarding there, yeah, basically I didn't, or I was taking out cards that are not good on defense. We're going to need to be defensive in this matchup. The opponent's more aggressive. Uh, Adanta Vanguard doesn't block at all, and it's the first card out here. It's not a matchup where we want to like pay for life kind of thing. And then a Johnny and Midnight Reaper were the other cards that I took out that are also not very good on defense. They're much, much better on offense. Um. Hmm. Yeah, Kaya is really good in this matchup. But I kind of want to have some, some things to protect Kaya. But yeah, Kaya is great in this matchup. You know, like, they're relying on their graveyard quite a bit. Being able to, like, get rid of these things. Really nice. Removal. Sweet. I should wait still a little bit on the priest, on killing the priest for like for them to cast. Yeah, they cast that creature, then I respond. All right, all the fours. Ow, ow. Ugh. At least two Molder Hulks are gone, so likely no more Molder Hulks in hand, right, opponent? Probably don't have another one. All right, let's go Bell Haunt. First, good blocker, and have them get rid of something. Ooh, got rid of a Chupacabra. That, I was going to say that's probably another Chupacabra, but... Alright, so they get to draw a card, but we'll be contempting this Midnight Reaper next turn. Ooh. Ooh. Or I could go Honor Guard plus Tithe Taker. And then I'm taking another hit. But just get the Honor Guard in play. Yeah, it means no Chupacabra. I'm taking a hit for four here. I'm not blocking Gutter Bones or Stitcher Suppliers this turn. They're, they're at six. So if they go get a Molder Hulk, then they'll be at five. So Molder Hulk will cost four mana. All right, yeah, I'd like to draw Kaya right now. Kaya would be a really good draw. All right, so their graveyard's going to be really full. Good for their Memorial to Folly. All right, you can block you. You can block... You. We take two. They can just get the gutter bones back. That's okay. If they're getting the gutter bones back this turn, they're not memorial to falling. Tree fitty with that 
Resub for four months in a row. You are amazing, Treefitty. Thank you very much. Hey, Vast, good afternoon. Sub countdown down to 26. Has been playing land last few turns. There's a land. The good news, so even though they can go get a Molder Hulk this turn, okay, they could have attacked and gotten Molder Hulk, but then it is, yeah, it is an ETB trigger. So Honor Guard does stop Molder Hulk, which is good news. They could have Find Finality. Find finality would be the reason not to attack with honor guard here. Or sorry, sorry, not to play this honor guard. See, you know, like they're they're definitely a find finality deck. They could just cast finality. So I guess I wait here, but the problem with waiting is they could just, you know, end step have an instant speed removal spell. You know, a, a trophy, a cast down, a contempt anything like that um, and then untap and play a creature with ETB effect and then our other honor guard doesn't do anything but I think that's I think it's less likely that they have that than them having a finality This is kind of a finality check here. Oh. Oh, dang. That thing's big. That thing's real big. Hmm. Good thing that Seraph is awesome. Yeah, we get a good attack in here with the Seraph. Because we can give Seraph Death Touch. So definitely playing this other land. And we'll have the six mana to be able to activate. Resplendent Angel if there is a finality. So we'll be able to keep Resplendent Angel from dying to a finality. So this one looks in hand. They're still drawing a random card. They just surveilled twice and put, them, put all four in the graveyard. So they didn't find anything good. I think finality was like their, like he, like basically their only card to clear up most of the battlefield, but it still wouldn't help them win. Okay, two and zero. Oh. Liking it. Lords of Angels doing pretty good. Ugh. Ugh. Good stretch. GG's. All right, there we go.
Um, we're on the draw. We hopefully draw lands. All right, one second. Hey, Eddie. Sorry, y'all had to take care of a little bit of business here. I don't know what my opponent's doing. I don't know why they didn't attack, but I am glad they did not. Um, you know, they said, like, the oops part afterwards. Um, this and here, let me give you one more. All right, sorry about that. Oh yeah, I should have mortified the obsession that previous turn. Right, sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't, I just wasn't really thinking right there. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was not, I was not very focused. Yeah, yeah, y'all are, y'all are right. I should have, that should have been my play whenever, whenever my opponent had the herald and the storm tamer and they had the mana to sack storm tamer. I should have been. Uh, should have mortified the Curious Obsession. Absolutely. Sorry, was not focused there. I mean, so playing playing a Johnny to Spell Pierce for no reason. I mean, my opponent had like one or two cards. Like if it was Spell Pierce, kind of whatever. A Johnny, a Johnny just doesn't do very much for us anyway. Um... Let's see. 
it, that's not a big deal. The second, the second one got retorted. The first one got spell pierced because I played the first one on turn five. Because right, I played Seraph on four, the first one on five. Right? Like, did I play this on two, this on three, Seraph on four, then this on five, and I got spell pierced, and then this one was retorted. I, I could have maybe I just didn't play I just didn't play a land first and so it could have got spell pierced. Uh, I think that's that could be what you're saying. We're not the only ones flooding really hard though. Looks like the opponent is too. I mean if if our opponent just um, you know, it started, t kept attacking with our creature and didn't let the Curious Obsession die, we'd probably lose this, but then if I would have just mortified the Obsession, then, you know, it would have been fine also. So we'll just, re this is, basically I made that mistake, opponent made that other mistake back, it kind of evened out. Okay, um, mono blue. So same thing we did last time. So we bring in the duresses, bring in the, the cast down, contempt, mortifies, Kaya, Vanguard comes on out. Want to go with two honor guard and then a Johnny and Reaper out. This plan worked the first time. I think I like it. Let's go with this. Okay, I'm back. Yes, I would competitive. Yes, I would consider this list competitive. Yes, I, I like this list quite a bit. I think it is. Um, I think it's a strong, a strong choice. All right, so definitely a slower hand. Everything costing three, but it's a good hand. Um, obviously, they can have their really fast start of one drop obsession and run us over but that's just the kind of thing that mono blue can do this is the kind of hand that would have been a lot better on the play because on the play they're you know sometimes they're, they're playing their stuff on turn two they don't usually have like their turn two have their two mana up for counter spells but starting at turn three like this turn right now this is where they usually start having their their mana up for counter magic History Banalia is the worst of our cards, so I'll throw that thing out there first. Hmm. So I, I could wait and just like mortify on their turn that takes a mana and then untap and be able to resolve things. But, oh, my Twitch screen went, or went away. But the problem is, is neither of these cards are, like mortifying only gets rid of the Storm Tamer or like that card in hand. Neither of them are that great right now. Tithe Taker is a really, really solid draw for us. All right, I should be back in the, in the Twitch chat now. It, there we go. I see TG Chaos. That's the first. Uh, what TG Chaos just say there is the first thing that I notice. All right. Well, now they we know they can't counter a Splendid Angel, so let's just get that. Sorry, my had to refresh the the screen there. So if you if you ask a question right above TG Chaos, I didn't see it. Yeah, and, and TG Chaos's statement doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't you don't win most of your games when you play horribly, no matter what. Oh. 
<clears throat> land would have been the best for us, but... I mean... Everything we have here is pretty good. Like, our, our options are all very good. Whether we play Kaya or Seraph, they're both good options. If I play Kaya, I'm just going to exile the Storm Tamer. And then if there's, like, another trickster that taps the Resplendent Angel and they hit the Kaya. I don't know. It's, it's a good option for us, but... I'm not going to exile, even though ter exiling Terramander is technically better, I wouldn't exile Terramander because if I did that, we're at two loyalty. Trickster taps Angel, then Archaea's dead to the Storm Tamer. Um, I had some homemade Chinese food for, like, stir-fry uh, for lunch. Don't have any plans right now for dinner. Didn't see a door, so I let myself in. Sometimes burying them just isn't good enough. Um. <clears throat> oh, I think I'm going to be having a salad, yeah, because I have, like, this dressing that... Some homemade dressing that I need to use up, so I'll be probably having a salad later tonight. It's not like all homemade. It was like like it's not like I didn't like batter it or anything. I just took like you know like chicken or like it's just like chicken that's uh, you know dice up some chicken. And cook it together with Hmm. I don't know if I want this thing blocked. You know, chicken, rice, some veggies put together. I had business to attend to anyway. Um you know, was it and then like a, a sauce, you know, like just I bought the sauce. I didn't make the sauce. You know, just like a bottle of sweet and sour sauce kind of thing. Is it even better to mortify plus history or just activate Resplendent Angel? Probably just activate Resplendent Angel. Just gain five life. All right, three and O, oh. two and O oh against Mono Blue, and we also beat Golgari Graveyard. Deck's looking good right now. Roger says I've been loving this deck. Added Discovery Dispersal instead of Takali to the main to smooth out draws. Did you find that you sometimes flood out? This helps some and Sultai feels pretty unwinnable game one anyway. I don't... Yes, we do. Um, hey, Patrick Bateman with uh, the Quip toothbrush. I would say that, yes, you do flood out sometimes, and so I could see Discovery doing some work there. Um, but I don't think that Sultai is unwinnable. It's not, it's not a great matchup, but it's not unwinnable. Takalis really do you know, a lot of work there, especially game one. But let's get some hype in the chat. Patrick Bateman, thank you so much for supporting with Quip. Um, that's our 33rd person, so we're seven away from a 12-hour stream there. And... Also, uh, 
Um, I did not update this one yesterday. We're actually at 37 for Harry's razors as well. There was a purchase last night. Go Junk, what's up? You're amazing. Thanks for resubbing there for the fifth month. There you go. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, dude, you're going to really like the toothbrush. So, yeah, if you like, that's a good thing. Says, so been enjoying your channel for a while, so I figured it was time to show some support by getting a cool looking toothbrush. Yeah, let me let me know, um, you like, whenever you get and everything, uh, you know, how much you like it and everything. And plus, since you got the quick toothbrush, if you would like, you can get a free donation deck. Uh, so basically, if there's any deck you would like me to play a league with any time, just let me know. That's one of the perks that I'm giving out for people that uh, go grab the toothbrush. Um, and that uh, that doesn't expire at all. So like, if you want to wait till after War of the Spark, if you have like some deck idea that you want to see played, for example, there you go. So usually donation decks are usually $20. For $25, you get uh, a really nice doctor recommended uh, toothbrush. Here's the link um, for Quip. It's, I can't really recommend it enough. It's, it's a really enjoyable brushing experience. And one of the best things you can do for your health is just getting a good toothbrush and br brushing your teeth regularly. Yeah, the opponent was on a mulligan to four, so they didn't get to do too much, but they're on like Mardu, Angel kind of stuff. Um, doesn't look like... Like, they're going to have anything for Takali Honor Guard to do. Probably not really one drops that I want with Kaya. They could have, like, Rekindling Phoenix that Kaya could eat from the graveyard kind of thing. But, you know, we'll we'll see. We can uh, reassess after sideboarding. Bell Haunts are definitely good against Knights. Vanguards are not really something that I really want in this matchup either because they're going to be kind of an aggressive deck too. I like just being the control deck in these kind of matchups. So we'll get all of these removal spells in. I think I do like Reaper for some more card draw. If I'm not playing any of these two drops, I guess I can't really play these at Johnny's. Do I want to play some Duress main? Or maybe I, maybe I do play... I don't know, I just have like this random Vanguard in here. I don't really want this Vanguard in here. Hmm. I don't really want... I'm going to go down to, like, one of Johnny. I don't really want any of these cards, but we're going to have to play something. I guess Honor Guard can block, I suppose. Because um, I, I need, like, my curve, as you can see right now, my curve is just way too many threes. Like, it's just all threes. Um, so I guess I need a couple two drops, I suppose. So I guess I'm going to play a couple Honor Guards. I'm not going to play Kaya's because I already have, like, all threes right now. Yeah, quite lucky. Um, yeah, you, you want a deck played today? Um, I can play yours instead of Bant Legends. Uh, I am, you know, I have the other donation deck to play. And. And I want to play Grixis Discard today. Some of you know, people were asking for it yesterday, so I want to play that one today. But yeah, I have one other slot, and I can. So I could play yours up next, or after, or I could play Grixis Discard next, and then play yours third also. Either way there. Here's some sc scary two drops. Let's just get rid of them. So this is not a Mardu Angels. This is definitely a Mardu Aggro. Yeah, Ugin is spoiled. Hey, Har Harav. Howdy. Hmm. Do I want to use my last Mortify?
I didn't get to do anything with the computer yesterday. Um, different things. For different reasons. We're going to try tomorrow. Hopefully. Great draw. Yep. Yep. You can submit best of one deck list. Absolutely. What do you think about Ugin? Ow. Um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I named human. So Marty humans. <clears throat> um, what does Ugin say exactly again? Yeah, it makes your. Going with the other Seraph here. Because I think I'm probably going to be blocking with a Seraph. I don't know, but even like when these, these Seraphs die, they make like the 1-1s. One I'm going to try to um, come back and kill my opponent this next turn. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not in love with it for standard. But I think older formats and like Commander... Modern other formats, Ugin can do a whole lot. Uh, that colorless spells you cast cost two less clauses, in particular, really, really nice. But standard wise, not too sold on it. Thinking like at that six mana slot, something like Liliana Dreadhorde General would be a lot better six mana card than it. But it can go in any deck. So like, its versatility of being able to go in any deck means it, it could see some play. All right, four and O. Oh. Orzov Angels coming through today. So four and O, oh, we are on the final boss. See if we can get to our fifth win. Let's go on over to the final boss playlist. We do have an extra life also, because even if we lose once, we'll be able to try again. What does Bant Legends even mean? It's a Bant deck built around the legendary sorceries. Uh, Kamal's Druidic Vow and Urza's Ruinous Blast. And it plays just tons of different legendary creatures and planeswalkers. Yeah, I have a Gruul Stompy deck in there yeah, on the Stream Decker page. You know, it, it's not uh, from the last couple days or anything, but there's one on there that. I think it's pretty good.
All right, we got Sultai. Honor Guard, where you at? Alright, not looking great for us. Alright, cool, quite lucky, I got gotcha. you. Fortify the Wild Growth Walker, but what are we doing from here? I guess we're playing Seraph of the Scales. Yeah, we'll be playing Seraphs. No lands? No lands. Ooh. Okay. As long as they don't work towards Vivian, our Seraphs can just trade with these Jade Lights and make some 1-1s one and everything. Hey, Zan. Okay, is back there on the couch. So I'm down to five. Probably play this thing. So that means I'm just having Resplendent Angel trade. Nah, I'm gonna play one of these. One more, we're just kinda too far behind right now. They could still have a Hostage Taker or Chupacabra, either of those like this turn. Okay. Honor guard right on time. Not too late after all. Trying to triple block this Jade Light Ranger. And then I, th I think I'm just on the activate Resplendent Angel right now plan. The thing is, is maybe I should be on the Ajani plan actually. Yeah, let's be on the Ajani plan. Ajani helps get our creatures over finality. Kinship. Could be a thing, I guess, somehow. <laughs> yeah, they did have the explorers. I mean, well, the first Jade Light found another and they just kept it on top. The other good, the good part about playing a Johnny this last turn also was uh, get it out, get it having good amount of loyalty, you so we can, can keep getting fight. these things back. Okay, got game one. Good job, Honor Guard. Let's get another Honor Guard, more Honor Guard, less Vanguard, more Cast Down, more Kaya. Not so sure about that more Kaya, honestly. Less Kaya. Um. 
you're limited, you're in gold, and you got paired against the 116th Mythic player. Yeah, that is weird that's a thing. That is really weird. That's so many threes. <laughs> it does seem like Sultai is final boss quite a bit. I think I kind of want to trim one Resplendent Angel. It's not great against Finality. It, it dies a lot of their stuff. It doesn't trade that well. I think, I think that's... Instead of cutting another Midnight Reaper, I think I want to cut a Resplendent Angel. Yeah, Lost Woods from Zelda is not the best final boss music, I admit, but it's just so good. It's so good. Good question, Eddie. Um, there's no honor guard here. This hand can certainly lose, but it's pretty hard to mulligan this hand. Like, good mana, a couple twos and a couple threes, you know? It's just it's too hard to mulligan it. Uh, nope. There we go. Anyway, um, Eddie says, last time I was in chat, I was talking about spending $100 on gems. When you bought gems, did you just draft or, or buy packs to get wild cards? So... Because the question is, like, what's the better thing to be doing with those? And so basically, if there's a hostage taker this next turn, I don't, I don't want a resplendent angel getting hostage taken right now. I'd rather a tithe taker get taken. We're a little ways from activating resplendent angel anyway. All right, so. Yeah, there's a couple different ways to go about it. It's basically, if you like drafting and sealed, um, I do think that it's better value to play, to draft and seal, and play sealed, especially sealed. I think sealed is good value uh, with using your gems. I think you can um, get a lot of packs and get a lot more cards, build your collection wider uh, if you just play sealed with your gems than if you just crack open packs. Now, if you are somebody that just really likes constructed and you want like your one deck, you know, crack, you know, using your gems to just crack open packs, uh, gets you, gets you like more wild cards. I guess that's, that's what I mean. And so it's easier to get like your one specific deck. But if you're trying to build an arena collection as a whole, uh, I think you get more mileage out of. Out of playing, out of drafting and playing sealed. Um, now that also, also with the caveat, if you if you don't you know if you don't like playing limited, that's obviously not worth it then. And um, the traditional drafting is really high risk, high reward. If you're good at drafting, um, it's worth it. But if you're if you're like a beginner at drafting or you're not very good, it's it can be really costly. So I was, I was too worried to play my other Resplendent Angel for Fine Finality here for how they contempted the Tithe Taker last turn. It kind of felt like they had Fine Finality. Don't think I need to overextend with this Tithe Taker either. Limited, yeah, the other thing is playing limited is is a really, really good way to get better at magic. I think it's like maybe the best way to get better at just magic as a whole is playing limited a lot and uh, improving your limited game. There's the 
There's so so many aspects of limited wasn't meant to be of being a successful limited player that help meet my uh, newest friend. And constructed and just playing magic in general. I want to mortify this harpooner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're at eight permanents. So we need two more permanents before our is turned on. Every defeat is a new beginning. blocks. Question is, do you think this game would be better if there was a chat system players could speak with each other with? I don't know. Better... I don't know if I would go so far to say better. I don't think it moves the needle too much either way. Honestly. a good one. Ow. We need our opponent just to have a couple lands in hand. Is also a good one. It does die to cast down, where Lyra would end up die to cast down. But if they have something like that, I'd rather them use it. All oh, right, good job, Honor Guard. Yeah, Game of Thrones tomorrow. When was the last episode? Was it like 2017? No attacks. They have that 3-2 reach there. So don't... I want to really throw away the 1-1s, one plus we're at 5. If they have removal spell for Lyra, we're going to need some defense. And there we go! We defeated Sultai. Honor Guard is a big deal there. And we went 5-0. and oh. Good job, Orzhov Angels. Yeah, this deck felt good. I liked the the small changes we made in the sideboard that we were talking about before. Um, I think that just playing, uh, I think I'm more comfortable with like Midnight Reaper uh, and Bell Haunt. Those are like our cards that we added in there over like Spyglass and Argyle's Bloodfast. Like Spyglass and Bloodfast, like those kind of cards, they just felt too narrow. And I think that we can just 
uh, be able to play cards like Midnight Reaper and Basilica Bell Haunt in, in a more wide variety of matchups. Um, but yeah, so after that change, after those like changes, this deck felt really solid, you know, like we didn't really struggle too much in any of those games and, um, yeah, this, this deck just felt really solid. Uh, we did not play against a mono red aggro this run. No, but the, the addition to bell haunts would have been really big there. And of course, you know, we have like some good cards against mono red with these angels also and everything. Uh, we faced mono blue twice. We faced a Golgari Graveyard deck, um, and we faced uh, Mardu Aggro, Mardu Humans. So we faced four aggro decks <laughs> there and Sultai. Um, we have like all four Mortifies for like the Wilderness Reclamation decks. We have like all the Mortifies. We'd have a couple Kayas to be able to hurt their Searcher's Cantos with Kayas also, and then of course all the Duresses. And we'd bring in, like, a Danto Vanguard. Tithe Taker is not so bad there either. Um, but Johnny put some good pressure on in history, too. So don't hate those kind of matchups either. I mean, this this deck seems pretty well-rounded. Uh, there are games they're going to lose to, like, Mana Troubles, you know? Like how uh, the person in chat was saying that they've been they've played some games where they just flood out pretty bad. You know, like, you're just going to have g games of Magic like that. But... Overall, I, I kind of like where this, this deck's at. I actually like, all you know, we have a, a ton of one-ofs in the sideboard, but I actually like all these one-ofs. I like uh, what we really have here. Yeah, this is a deck where I'm going to have to play some more and um, and everything. And, yeah, this deck felt pretty good. I liked it. Good job, Kenny Ninja. You just 5-0'd with quasi Ooze. Way to go. All right, so if you are watching this video later on on YouTube... Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there, but thanks for watching some Orzov Angels, and I'll see you for the next video.